What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 forgotten wrestling moments you won't believe actually happened. This should be a very interesting one. Love videos like this where there's, you know, certain things that happen that we didn't know was actually to be true or your rumors are about, but it actually did happen. So we're gonna check this out by what coach for uh, wrestling. Appreciate all the love and support. We're gonna get right into this video. Let's do it. Watch yourself for one hell of a ridiculous, shocking, and just generally odd history lesson, folks. Because it's time to unpack some of those wholly strange and sometimes mind-boggling WWE moments that have largely been forgotten by the average wrestling fan. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, Let's and here are thing. 10 forgotten WWE moments you won't believe actually happened. Number 10, Braun Strowman's massive splash. Clash of Champions 2019. Seth Rollins' Universal Championship defense against one-time tag partner Braun Strowman didn't exactly immortalize itself on the night of Clash of Champions 2019. With the pair already losing their Raw Tag Team Championships earlier in the evening, their largely forgettable rivalry was mercifully cut short on the back of the Architect's emphatic win over the Monster Among Men. There was one rather fun highlight to be found within this pre-fiend Rollins calamity though, in the form of the absolutely sensational visual of the gigantic challenger soaring through the sky like a damn cruiserweight <laughs> at one point. Despite already showing off an ability to nail opponents with highly athletic drop kicks, and flip many a vehicle, Strowman's yeah. monstrous splash from the top <laughs> rope easily ranks as the most audacious of his many unexpected physical feats. Would you definitely be forgiven for forgetting this even yeah, pop the I crowd on this, the night? This, this was the this same happened. PLE that sent the audience home seemingly happy, with the fateful sight of Bray's clownish demon force-feeding his leather glove to the defending champ after all. Number 9, Baron Corbin's Forgotten Night, SmackDown 2020. Baron Corbin hasn't half had his fair share of gimmick and role changes over the years. Yeah. After initially rocking up on the main roster in his lone wolf guys, Corbin would ultimately transition into the wholly derided Constable of Raw, before eventually shifting into everything from a kingly new look to an ill-fated modern-day wrestling god. And it was during the dying days of his spell as the aforementioned King of the Ring winning pain in the ass, that it's often forgotten that Corbin assembled himself yet another crew of annoying henchmen to help him achieve his dastardly goals. After being split from their fellow forgotten son, Jackson Riker, on the back of the heat sent his way for some controversy Controversial Twitter activity. Wesley yeah. Blake and Steve Cutler were suddenly revealed as Corbin's new allies on the Damn. December 4th, 2020 that edition of thing. SmackDown. Oh, the shit. hilariously <laughs> titled Knights of the Lone Wolf didn't stick around too long, of course, being disbanded shortly after due to Cutler and Blake eventually getting released from the company. And so they Damn. simply became yet another reminder of WWE depressingly making it up as they went along during this often painful period. Number eight, Forgot that MVP was really a thing. and Vink Management, Raw 2020. Speaking of which, the Knights of the Lone Wolf weren't the only units suddenly given some main roster time to shine, before quickly being dragged off TV during the balmiest of years known as 2020. In the wake yeah. of making an unexpected return to WWE at that year's Royal Rumble, MVP eventually went on to become something of a regular on Monday Night Raw. But just before he went about putting the pieces in place for the eventual Hurt Business squad, the former United States champion actually dusted off his manager's jacket for another bunch of lads on April 27th. None other than future Retribution and Chase U members Shane Thorne and wow. Brandon Bing respectively, had already made their presence known on the Red Show since March. Yet aligning with MVP felt like a clear attempt to elevate the TMDK members above the level of forgettable jobbers during the excruciatingly silent early crowdless is, era. Bro, Vink and Thorn swiftly getting sent- Is my memory that bad? I don't remember this. <laughs> back down to NXT before quietly being Dang. disbanded as a team, alongside the fact very few can even recall this bizarre faction becoming a thing in the first place, tells you all you need to know about how successful this thrown together alliance ultimately was. And that very. Number 7, Shelton Benjamin's Distracted Promos, SmackDown 2019. A fun enough team up with the ultimate tag team utility player, Chad Gable, would kick off Shelton Benjamin's long-awaited WWE comeback in 2017. But by 2019, the former Intercontinental Champion had largely gotten lost in the mid-card shuffle. And it was during that hugely forgettable chapter in his career that the veteran suddenly found himself being thrown into some of the strangest backstage promo segments of modern <laughs> times. Stumped in front of a camera before being asked everything he deserved Google better, win man. An upcoming WWE title match to whether he'd be interested in competing for the 24-7 gold. Shelton's silent response and odd stares around the room were definitely something. Then they just stopped. The closest thing to a payoff came about when Benjamin finally uttered the word shorty to his former pre-shorty G pal Gable backstage. 
But away from that, this just ranks as one of the weirdest and most random, unremembered running segments to pop up on the blue brand. Number yeah. six, Matt Hardy fights Evander Holyfield. Saturday night's main event, 2007. This, now, this one what? definitely feels like something that went down in another corner of the multiverse. However, the record does somehow show that Matt Hardy once went one-on-one -on -one with a former world championship winning boxer in our timeline. With the Hardy boy being what? challenged to a boxing match by then rival MVP on the upcoming edition of Saturday night's main event back in 2007, Don't remember the fact this. the latter was suddenly unable to compete due to being diagnosed with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome soon paved the way for a pretty shocking upgrade. Along with roping in Michael Buffer to announce the brilliantly ridiculous circus set to unfold, a horrified Matt Hardy found himself sharing the squared circle with genuine boxing great Evander Holyfield. What? And as expected, the heavyweight former champ proceeded to work beat the stuffing out of the ladder lover. The dreamlike sequence, one what? also equipped with everything from WWE Diva Ring Girls to Corner Men, ultimately ended in a no contest after an irritating MVP decided to intervene. A move that resulted in him eating one hell of a right for his troubles. However, while many are quick to remember the likes of Tyson Fury and Mike Tyson stopping I by did to not know this was a thing, bro. Faces, Evander's bizarre wander into the world of sports entertainment isn't revisited anywhere near as much. Oh, no, I, I did not know that was a thing. I do not remember that at all. What? Yo. Five, Howard Finkel's Jericho Association, SmackDown 1999. Oh my Howard gosh. the Fink Finkel has quite rightly gone down in history as one of the very best announcers ever to do it. But there were mm -hmm. actually a number of occasions over the years Rest when the iconic peace, voice man. found himself getting a little too close to the action. And perhaps the most easily forgotten of his few on-screen storylines involved the mighty Fink eventually donning a mask and going by the name of El Dopo. That is right, whilst what? allying himself with a recently debuting Chris Jericho on WWE programming back in 19. 99, things suddenly wound up in a hilariously wacky scenario that involved him clashing with Y2J's then rival Ken Shamrock under a luchador mask. Sure enough, his time as a dodgy SmackDown referee was cut somewhat short after a brassed off Shamrock saw through Fink's incredible disguise and fake accent upon being wrongly DQ'd against Curtis Hughes on September 16th. Again, a great many fondly remember wow. Fink's unmatched work on the stick during his 40 year stint with the company. But you'll struggle to find anyone who can honestly recall this rare sight Didn't of even know that that's just happened. What the hell? The blue show. This is Number all four, Bobby Lashley like four collides with Alistair Black on the strangest stage. WrestleMania 36. This is Returning all to like the all around bizarro me, world that was 2020 now, and to the performance center show of shows that played host to countless intriguing matches that have since been generally ignored slash forgotten by both fans and yeah. WWE themselves. Now, sure, the company have begrudgingly acknowledged the likes of Drew McIntyre's long awaited WWE Championship win, the Firefly Funhouse and Boneyard matches, mm -hmm. and even most recently, Sean a spotlight on Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley's first battle on the Mania stage. But when it comes to one-time dream encounters like former NXT champion Alistair Black colliding with the dominant Bobby Lashley on the grandest stage of them all, the average wrestling fan or even WWE employee likely couldn't tell you a single thing about said hard-hitting battle. Same here. Given absolutely <laughs> zero build in the lead-up to the early pandemic Mania, a Lashley fresh off of the god-awful Rusev love triangle saga with Lana uh. ate a deliciously timed Black Mass counter mid-spear for the Alistair win in the end. And while the impromptu battle wasn't dreadful by any means, it still joined the likes of Liv Morgan versus Natalia, Cesaro versus Drew Gulak, a yeah. SmackDown Women's Championship five-way, and Elias versus Baron Corbin as one of the many matches few even remember being on this strangest card of them all. Number three, Bret man. Hart dethrones United States Champion The Miz, Raw 2010. Had Bret Hart's hotly anticipated WWE return reached its dramatic end with his plodding beatdown of of Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 26, many would have just been happy to see the hitman given one last and much deserved moment in the sports entertainment sun. But this absolute icon was surprisingly far from finished, folks. In a marvelously insane turn of events, after falling to Tyson Kidd on the May 10th episode of Raw, The Miz offered one of the Hart family the chance to challenge for his United States Championship. And with the hopes of embarrassing the dynasty in their home country of Canada, Miz opted for a battle with good old Brett. A week on, that's precisely what went down, with Vladimir Kozlov and William Regal being taken out by Kid and David Hart Smith early on. QA villainous Chris Jericho mm. popping into the ring in a suit and getting walloped by <laughs> Natalia, with Miz also soon comically eating crap in the form of a heart attack before being locked in a glorious sharpshooter for a simply extraordinary Hitman wow. victory. In between stepping back into the ring for the first time in years at Mania I and delightfully remember. joining Team WWE <laughs> at that year's SummerSlam. I remember but that, but bro, this is really blowing my mind. I'm not making this up. A lot of this. I don't remember. I don't remember him beating the Miz to become the United States champion. What the? F 
And I I was watching it around this time. What the? I must overlook that this all-time legend also found time to add an unlikely additional piece of gold to his mighty collection upon making his epic comeback too. Number two, That's that way wild. two out of three falls period. The main roster 2019. Look, if it wasn't clear already based on many of the forgotten entries found in this very list, 2019 to 2020 was about as peculiar as it gets in this already frequently absurd world of sports entertainment. Uh -huh. With Vince McMahon going well full Vince McMahon as the 2010s reached their end and the 2020s got underway, the one-time head of creative frequently became strangely obsessed with everything from gauntless encounters to backstage fight clubs. But amidst the always baffling content folks remember being pumped into WWE TV around this time, it's often forgotten just how much Vinnie Mac got a kick out of two out of three falls matches at one point as well. This wasn't simply a case of the boss suddenly feeling that one fall just wasn't enough though. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the never-ending stream of two out of three falls, elimination bout, and match restarting madness was actually WWE's way of adjusting to McMahon's new edict of performers hilariously now not being allowed to wrestle during commercial breaks. Because they don't do mm -hmm. that in real sports, damn it! As with just about any entirely odd Vinnie Mac rule, this one too was ultimately scrapped later down the road. Yeah, that, but never that forget sense. that there was a time there when two out of three became a weird main roster norm. Number one, Edge... Yeah, man, it's like... The, it's a live event. Let the wrestlers still wrestle. If you're not gonna do picture in pictures, just let them wrestle. A lot of times they just do like rest holds and shit. You know what I'm saying? But I would still let them do some moves for the fans that are there, that are watching. Like, I don't know. Speared Jeff Hardy off the ladder before WrestleMania X7. Raw 2000. The charismatic Enigma huh? famously snapped the rated R superstar in half at WrestleMania 23 after falling from up high. But easily the pair's most notable instance of total innovative chaos came six years earlier during TLC2. In truth, though, many forget that this wasn't actually the first time Edge had executed this sort of death defying spear on a vulnerable Hardy mid tag team ladder contest, though. SummerSlam 2000 saw the Hardy Boys battling against Edge and Christian and the Dudley boys in the inaugural TLC battle uh -huh. of course and that match also saw the future world champion collide with Hardy high in the air when it comes to the exact spot involving Jeff dangling from some belts before getting snapped in two by his soaring rival though Legendary that precise moment actually went down a whole six months before WrestleMania X7 on an episode of Raw once what? again fighting against ENC in a lad about it's largely forgotten that the Hardy boy pretty much rehearsed the very bump that would immortalize wow. him and on this stage <laughs> forever oh, during a what? random September 25th 2000 edition of the red show what a time to be alive eh and that's our list of any other forgotten wwe moments people won't believe actually happened let us know all about them in the Bro, comment section what the right now to be fair i didn't have cable at that time so i could only watch monday night raw at like my cousin's house when i ever whenever i was there or whatnot so that that could obviously be the reason why i don't remember that i only remember the infamous spear off the top of the ladder you know while matt hardy i mean jeff hardy's holding on to the belts i remember that at wrestlemania obviously it was in houston but i don't remember that one what bro am i getting old like legitimately like old old to the point where i don't remember shit i mean i can give myself a an out on that one because once again i didn't have cable like that back then so and my mom didn't want me <laughs> want me watching like wrestling, especially not Monday Night Raw. But I was still watching it whenever I could at other people's houses. But still, what? Comment down below. Let me know. Do y'all remember a lot of this stuff that was on this list? Whatever you don't remember that's on this list, let me know. So I'm not the only one feeling like I don't remember shit. Please, somebody has to be in agreement with me because this list was very effective. I don't remember none of this shit. <laughs> none of it. All this, y'all think I'm playing. All this is brand new to me, damn near. Or I vaguely remember, maybe? So let me know if I'm the only one that don't remember anything on this list. Please, please, I don't want to be that guy like, damn, bro, your memory is getting bad. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm still young, speedy YouTube, wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.